back, friends. We are about to meet our next presenter and further explore the world of Verter. And to ready us for that adventure, let's take a look at this clip. Mm. I'm so excited to introduce our next presenter. Sofia Stefanovic is a writer, a performer, a teacher, and I love this autobiographical tidbit from her Twitter profile. She's a hangry Serbo-Australian living in Manhattan. You may know her work from the radio show The Moth, her show, The Alien Nation, or her book, Miss X Yugoslavia. If you do know her work, you know that she is an absolutely wonderful storyteller. And if you don't know her work, I'm so excited for you to get to know her and her work. Welcome, Sophia. Hi. Will you please unmute yourself? Thank you. Here I am. Hi, Susan. Welcome. Before I turn you over to these good people, we're just asking everyone who visits us today, number one, how are you really feeling? Like in a word or two, how are you really feeling in this moment? Right now I'm feeling excited because we are about to talk about writing and that's my escape. This year has been all about that. So I'm actually very excited right now. That's not how Excellent. I am all the time, but that's how I am now. <laughs> This moment, exactly. And this leads to our next question. What is one thing that you have been doing to take care of yourself during this time? Allowing space for creativity, which is really, really tough to, yes. to make, but even if it's five minutes. Love it. You're a person after my own heart. And without further ado, take it away, Sophia. Thank you so much, Susan. Hi, everyone. I'm, like I said, I'm so excited to be here today. Um, I love talking about writing. It's my passion. Storytelling is, uh, Susan, you know, told you in, in her lovely introduction, I'm a writer. This is a book that I wrote. It's a memoir about um, growing up as a immigrant kid in Australia while Yugoslavia falls apart. That's where I um, came from when I was a kid and that explains my accent uh, the Australian Serbian background um, I'm also a storyteller and a teacher and I'm really excited to talk a little bit about letter writing and to just get a bit creative with you all today and and do a fun exercise so if you have any questions during this, I won't be um, looking at the chat. If you could send them to Dan and then we'll make some time at the end. And Dan has very kindly agreed to um, look at those. So if you've got a question, just send it on, on to Dan. All right. So I thought first we could talk about Viter and the use of letters in the opera. Um, Charlotte experiences Viter's love through his letters. As we saw in that gorgeous clip at the beginning, she cherishes them and is tormented by them. Um, and he uh, is quite the letter writer, right? So he's filling these pages with emotion. His letters, um, as well as serving the task of correspondence are also this like outlet for a young person who is very passionate. Um, and it's based on a novel um, by Goethe, here it is, The Sorrows of Young Verter, which is all written in letters. Um, and the epistolary, the epistolary novel is a well-known form, um, an interesting way to communicate and a, and a really interesting way to format writing as well. So I've got a couple of examples that, that Dan's going to share. I've got a little one right here from the book that the opera is based on. So here we have letters 
from Voltaire to his friend Wilhelm. So they're not actually to Charlotte. Mostly, most of the book is him writing to his friend. Um, and it's all very, you know, here I am overcome with fatigue and dying with thirst. Sometimes late in the night when the moon shines above me, I recline against an aged tree in some sequestered forest. So you get the idea. This is like a young, extremely like emotional, passionate person getting it all out there on the page. And that's one thing that I really love about letters. Um, they don't actually have to be to a person. And in fact, today, when we're talking about them, we're just going to look at it as a way of self-expression. So um, I want to give you a couple more examples. Dan, if you can just show us the next one, please. Um, and we'll just hold on that for a second. So letters are a literary device that are used in many famous novels, including uh, good ones like Dracula, uh, The Color Purple, uh, you might have read We Need to Talk About Kevin, um, as well as nonfiction, the brilliant book Between the World and I, written by ta Coates, is written as a letter to his teenage son. Um, and it's about being Black in the United States today. This book that I've got here, Illumine, is a novel, uh, maybe if you can put the next one up, please, Dan. It's written in a really kind of fun way. So it's not just letters, but there's emails. Um, it's a sci-fi romance and it uses classified documents, censored emails to write this fictional book, a very fun read. Um, I've also got another example for you, Dan, if you can just click on the next one. This is a really fun one. Text from Jane Eyre by Ma Mallory Ortberg. Uh, it's funny. It's all written in text messages. I recommend it. Um, and if we go on to the next one. Hmm. Oh, yes, here we go. We have a letter, an open letter from Toni Morrison endorsing Obama before he was the president. So there's also this, this great uh, political role that letters can play. This is, a, this is an open letter from Toni Morrison endorsing Barack Obama. So my final example, and then we'll go into the exercise, um, is this one from Napoleon. And I think this is an interesting one. So Napoleon, when we think of him, we think of the Napoleonic Wars, uh, but here we see a different side of him. So Napoleon wrote many letters to his wife, Josephine. They got married uh, and not long after that, he had to travel um, and his letters were very much kind of in the vein of Voltaire, like these very emotional, dramatic, um, love-fueled, passionate, obsessive, jealous kind of letters. And they're, they're really interesting. You can find all of these online, actually. Um, but I thought I would just give you that one as well, because I think that letters are a really good way, a, a little sort of time capsule as well that captures what a person was like at the time of writing. So that's it for my images. We're going to go lo-fi from now on. You're just going to see my face. Um, I wanted to ask you, actually, hang on, excuse me. So the letter writing form, a lot of people love letters, big letter writers. Uh, I wanted to ask if you can think of a significant letter from your life. Like, did you receive something from a friend? Um, can you think of something you found in your grandma's attic? Can you just think of a significant letter, something that meant a lot to you? It doesn't actually have to be a letter. It could be a note. I have a note that a boy wrote to me in high school, very poorly spelled, that came with a mixtape that he made. But it's something that I still look at and I remember that time in my life. Who's got, maybe you can put that in the chat if anyone has any little examples of letters that were significant to them. Thanks, Dan. What's a special letter, either that you wrote or that someone wrote to you? You can just pop it in. Another one, a friend of mine sent me recently some books from Australia and just seeing her handwriting just made me start crying. I didn't before I even read it. 
letters from my father. Oh. Lori Grot says a letter from my husband, a letter my husband wrote to me in our first year of marriage about his dreams for us, smile emoji. <laughs> Beautiful. Letters from former students. Yeah, I think that they're, yeah, letters, letters are amazing. I think we can all agree. Thank you everyone for sharing. Um, and I also wonder, what do you, have you ever, and I think this is unusual to see a letter that you wrote at a certain time. So let's kind of expand it out, not just to letters, but say your own journals or certain bits of writing from a time in your life. Um, have you come across your own writing from years ago and like a, a journal entry, a class activity, and how do you feel seeing it? Cringy, funny. I'm always cringing. I always find poetry that I save. I save those things. I find them. I get a reality check. <laughs> um, tell me. Oh, a love note from my husband that ended with don't show this to anyone. Oh, okay, these are all lovely. I'm not gonna look at them anymore because I get very emotional very easily these days. Um, all right, so, so let's talk about our own writing. H have you ever come across, or have you ever, I, I assume you have come across some of your own writing and is there something special about that? How do you feel about finding some of your own writing from a certain period of time? I think it's really, I teach memoir writing and I have written a memoir. And I think that having your own writing from uh, different times in your life is extremely important and revelatory. Can anyone, can, would anyone like to share what it's like finding your own little writing or if you came across something? Oh, um, Shalise, or I, I believe, forgive me if I'm mispronouncing that, says, I have been healed by my younger words. The beautiful thing to say. Yeah. Great. Okay. All right. So now we're all a little bit like started thinking about this and we're, we're now going to um, get our creative juices flowing. So all right, I love these. I'm going to stop looking at the chat so I can concentrate and maybe we can close up the chat and we can chat a little bit more later. If you have questions, send them to Dan though, because we'll have some time at the end to talk more about how this exercise was for everyone. So we'll do the exercise now. So everyone get um, comfortable. This is kind of get the energy flowing to your hands, to your feet. Sometimes, you know, you can like wiggle around a little bit. I know we're on Zoom, so half of you are probably not wearing pants, but if you are, you can do whatever you need to do to, make, to get comfortable. <laughs> All right, yes, yes, very good. Okay, so getting the energy flowing and we're going to now write, think about writing a letter to your obsession. So don't do any writing right now, just follow. I'm going to do some very, very clear prompts. So everyone, you can just put your writing instruments down. Um, Okay, now, for the first thing I would like you to do, and we're thinking a little bit about Voltaire and Charlotte, but not too much. We're gonna let this, this flow into just a, a writing exercise. So we're going to be writing a letter to an obsession from your past. So it could be a person, it could be a thing. Um, you're not writing with the aim of sending the letter. So we're writing it with the aim of unleashing emotion onto the page. Okay, so you can be completely free. You don't have to share with the rest of us, though maybe some people will want to. So I want you to think about what is the obsession that you had at some point in your past? It could be a person who you were in love with. It could be the haircut that all the cool kids had at the time that you really wanted to have. It doesn't have to be a person. It could be a thing. It could be a celebrity who you had like a little bit too much of a crush on. Just think of it. And when you think of the thing, the obsession, just jot that down and nothing more. So for me, it would be Nemanja, the boy from French kindergarten. 
So that's why I remember as my obsession, that's why I'm going to be writing about. So all you need to do for now, and I'll give you another 30 seconds or so just to think about it. Think about the obsession that you're going to be addressing your letter to. And remember, we're not sending it. That's why it can be a haircut or a pair of shoes. All right. And everyone jot that down. And now we're going to do a memory exercise. And for this, this is something that you need to be really comfortable for. So make sure that you're that you just feel relaxed and comfortable. And I'm going to take you through some prompts. It's going to be quite relaxing. Um, if you don't want your video on, you can turn it off and you can just close your eyes. If everyone can actually close their eyes for this and I'm going to guide you. So this is going to be a little bit like one of those guided exercises and we're going to delve into memory. So I'd like you to close your eyes and then try to take yourself back to the time of your obsession. So think about you from that time. How did you look? How did you see yourself? How did you talk? What are some of the phrases that you used? I'd say they're probably different to how you speak now. What music did you love? What kind of clothes did you wear? Now through the eyes of you then, look at the subject of your obsession. Can you remember a scene? So when were you first introduced? What are the details you remember? Can you remember where you are? What was so wonderful about this person or thing that spoke to you then? So we're looking through your eyes as you were then. What can you hear, see, smell, touch? Can you remember dialogue? Can you see anything around you? And now just stay in that memory. I'm going to let you stay in it for a couple of minutes and just try and observe all the things that are happening around you. So I want you, you're there as you were then and through those eyes, you're seeing it. And you're listening. And take a couple more minutes, keep your eyes closed. I'll tell you when we're done. And we're looking for visceral, so any little things that come up, flavors, sounds. If you were going somewhere, were you holding your parents' hand? Okay. And when you're ready, just come back again. You can open your eyes. And we're going to go to the next part. So this part is important. We're going to actually write down without thinking about the beauty of language and starting with dear, Nemanja in my case, first love, haircut, whoever, you can start like that, dear, XX. And then I want you to write everything that you just thought of. So you've got 10 minutes and we're thinking of unleashing those memories. You can write as if you are you back then. So I met you yesterday, etc. Or you can write from your point of view now. But I'd like you to bring in all those little tiny visceral details. Okay. If anyone has any questions, please send them along. Otherwise, 
we're going to do a 10 minute countdown. And Dan's got a beautiful 10 minute right here with some music. And just let yourself write. So please do not think about whether it's good. Do not edit. None of that. You're just writing. You're just enjoying the writing process. Let's go.
All right, everyone, come on back. That was great music. Thank you to the Met for providing that one. I think that uh, definitely got some. It's from Berter. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, so now I would like to ask if you have any questions. Like I said, you can you can pass them on to Dan, and then he will call on people. But I'd also love to hear. You don't have to share what you have written, although you can, but just what the experience was like. I find that letters are such a good one because you can, you know, you're given the power of directly addressing someone or something, yet you have no interruptions. Uh, you can put your fury onto the page. You can put your passion onto the page. Did people enjoy it? What did you think? So you can either message Dan directly or use the hands up option is that what it's called Dan <laughs> I see Karen Saxon with her hand raised and I never turned out an opportunity to spotlight her so hi Karen hang on I'm going to ask you to unmute Sophia hello. this is Karen <laughs> hi Karen hello how are you great how is that exercise for you it was actually very comfortable because my dad started me doing this years ago. Um, it was how he dealt with painful experience and what have you. So it was a very comfortable place for me. Um, and I'm happy to share it. I, I'm Please. No, I have nothing to hide. Um, it's called Reflections from the Choir Loft. How did we manage to fit 45 people up here? Wow, I don't recall this organ being so small. And these rehearsal spaces, I don't think we could fit my household in here now, much less than much less even half of us. Or maybe I'm just now learning how big this place was and how everything that happened here shapes my life now. I hope that I can take this feeling and the lessons learned here and make some child's heart as big as mine is now. I hope that some young person's life is as filled with passionate purpose as are my memories of St. Philip's Episcopal Church, the Buffalo Arts and Music School, and Mr. Donald L. Hilliard. Better? No. Different? Yes. And thank God for the difference. I didn't know it meant that much to me until I read it. I'm sorry for crying. No, I thank you. Uh, thank you for sharing and for making yourself vulnerable. I think that that's one of the beautiful things about writing is that these things come up, right? Yep. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I would love to hear, did anyone else feel themselves? I think that Karen was absolutely transported to this moment that you managed to recapture and be there. Um, who Who else would like to share or talk about you know, the memory part of the exercise, not just the letter writing, but we actually put ourselves somewhere else. We went back in time and that whole part of the exercise where I asked you to listen, to hear, to smell, that can be, that can be quite confronting, right? And it can be very moving and beautiful. So I would love to hear if anyone else wants to um, even talk about what that part of the exercise was like. Yeah, I, I have some wonderful comments coming in the chat to me directly. Um, oh, but we have uh, Ilya, maybe we should, let's spotlight. Here we go. Hi, I'm gonna ask you to unmute. Hi. <laughs> hey. um, yeah, I'm Ilya. Um, and I really, really liked the memory part of it. For me, it was a memory from like college and um, and I was, you know, in a classroom. So there's a lot of like smells and sounds going into it because it was one of those big lecture spaces with the like folding chairs and the rickety tables that fold out. Um, and so, yeah, I, that word transported was really great. I felt very transported to that moment. Thanks, Ailea. I think that uh, actually that exercise, I mean, we did it today with letter writing and remembering a specific obsession but uh, I find it really useful so when I was writing my memoir and I was trying to dig into like a specific time that part 
of the exercise like what we did is something that I did all the time and I do it with students all the time trying to just put yourself back there and I think one of the things that needs to happen is you need to be really comfortable you need to close your eyes and then try and go back there and I think that's beautiful that the sounds of the you know remembering that room um those are such beautiful details when you're writing thanks for yeah, sharing. thank you <laughs> Thanks, Elia. Um, I believe that uh, Stephanie Ermston would like to share. Let me spotlight Steph. Oh, there we go. Hi. Hi. Oh, there we go. Um, I was just going to, I agree with what she said about being transported. And I was just going to say it made me not only like viscerally feel the moment of being a teenager, because for me, it just made me feel the complete lack of sense and lust that I had at that time, just being obsessed with somebody, but also now it made me at the end of that time, because I had some time at the end, reflect on how I'm still like that person when I was that age and then how I can reflect now when I feel that and how it just, it, it showed my maturity from that to now, but it's how I still feel those obsessive feelings about things, but then I reflect on how am I reacting to that? And so it was an interesting, lesson and how have I grown since I was 16 too. So I liked that. Interesting to go back there. You don't do that very often. <laughs> it is. It's interesting and it's kind of hard. I always feel tired after doing that. I don't know if anyone else found that a little bit exhausting as well. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I think Lori Gratz wanted to share a letter to her ninth grade self, which I'm totally here for. One Ooh. second. There we go. Um, Hi, Lori. There we go. Oh, hey. My little guy is singing karaoke in the background. So bear with me if you can hear him howling. He is downstairs. <laughs> um, so this is a letter to my ninth grade me. Um, you work, you worry and worry. What do others think of you? Why don't boys look at you? Why don't girls invite you to things? Why don't you feel like you belong? You saved money all summer to buy five items of good clothing. Wearing Gap won't bring you attention. Being awesome at sports is not gonna help. Your walk, you walk into the first day of band. Yep, you're the only girl percussionist again. Great, it's noisy, it's rowdy. Again, you feel alone even though the room is full. You sit, then someone sits next to you. He, yes, he offers a bright smile and kind eyes. Ninth grade me, this is the beginning of a journey of friendship, knowing your father God, and eventually meeting your two best friends. You feel rock button, bottom, but your way was not meant to be. A new path of friends is coming. So love yourself, you are beautiful. You have so much to offer. People do see you, stop feeling down and pass on the love. It's better that way. Um, so it was really releasing to like think of that ninth grade me um, and just know how much healing happened from like that moment to 35 year old me. It's just, it was very good. It was therapeutic. I think, yeah. And it sounds like I, I love that um, love that you give to little you. I think about that all the time, you know, when you think, oh, just give yourself a break little Sophia that's what, I, that's what I always see but I, I thought that was really beautiful and I really identified with it as well thank you thank you so much for sharing Laurie okay. thank you um do we have time for one more one more all right great um there were so many wonderful ones in the chat um Virginia wrote a letter to herself as a um as a young aspiring opera singer Barbara I'd love to spotlight you can you turn your video on so I can make that happen please <laughs> Barbara Prestridge, sorry. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna add you and oops, where'd she go? There we go. Hi, Barbara. Hi. Um, when you asked for an obsession, uh, the strongest thing that came to me was what it was like as a new mother uh, with my firstborn and how obsessed I was with him and protective, but mostly the sense of an absolute 
miracle that you don't understand where it came from, but you're going to treasure it deeper. You never knew you could love the way you love those babies and how he's now 31 years old. And I've never really described to him what it was like you know, I mean, it, of course, it's lasted forever, but um, those initial super obsessive first couple of years um, are, are really crazy. And it was fun to revisit it. I wonder, um, Barbara, I have a little three year old and I think about this, you know, I think about what you're talking about all the time. I wonder, are you tempted to actually write to your child and send this letter to him? Um, he'd probably like poo poo it, <laughs> you know, like when I tell him things we did, he was like, oh, mom, didn't you have a life? <laughs> like, yeah, oh. I, you two children were it. And I'll never, um, I never regret a moment of those years. Yeah. So, they don't so get good. it until they are parents themselves, I think. Yeah. Um, that was so beautiful. Thank you for sharing. I wanted to say, I wanted to thank everyone for being so um, open and uh, both to doing the exercise and to sharing as well. Uh, I know we have one minute left and I'm not going to go over time. I want to just leave you on a couple of just tiny little notes about letter writing and this exercise. So this sort of writing provides writers with an outlet. So passion, fury, space where your thoughts can be articulated without interruption. That's what I love about letter writing and about creative writing and this memory exercise in general. We can put our voice intimately on the page, whether it's gonna be read by someone else or not. We get to exercise a special part of our creative mind that we don't get to work with a lot. And I think it's very liberating as well as being a little bit exhausting and a little bit emotional. I also think that there's something beautiful to it. So I hope